You know, if this works, I think I'm going to try space travel next. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today I'm getting into a new project that I think is going to keep me busy for the majority of 2020. Every year or so, I try to take on a challenging project that hasn't really been done before, or at least hasn't been done to the level that I'm going to be doing it. Uh, behind me, on either side there, you can see some of my previous endeavors, uh, a half-track uh, Toyota and a steam-powered Jeep. So I wanted to take all of my previous experience and try to apply it to something new and different and really challenge me in this RC realm to do something that I'd never done before. I'm going to be taking the Traxxas TRX4 6x6 and converting it to autonomous drive or self-driving. If you've ever seen a Tesla on the road, you know that those cars have fully autonomous drive, self-driving ability. It's controlled by a myriad of very powerful computers and radar and all sorts of uh, devices to make that happen and to make it safe. And it is a very cool piece of technology and it's something that I was very intrigued by. Never one to shy away from a challenge. I always like to try to take it to the next level, especially if it involves this hobby. And this project is no different. Those trucks behind me were a challenge and this is probably going to be the biggest challenge to date. It is not an easy thing to do, especially do it well. I'd like to thank the folks at Traxxas for sending me the TRX4 6x6. Uh, it's a great platform to do this sort of experiment on, and uh, I'm really, really honored that they would choose to send one out to me. I'm definitely looking forward to using this platform, and it is an excellent platform for this, and I'll show you why in a minute. There's already a lot going on in this truck, and I thought it was the perfect test bed to start working on this autonomous vehicle project because there is so much room. A 6x6 offers a lot of additional space underneath the body to put a lot of additional electronics, and this system is definitely going to require that. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that I'll be using in order to make this autonomous vehicle happen. In, say, a Tesla Model S, you've got tons of computing power, radar, uh, LiDAR, uh, all sorts of devices designed to help the autonomous vehicle system work. Uh, Self-driving is very challenging, especially when you've got real-life human beings on board. Uh, luckily, we don't have that problem here, uh, so we don't require that much computing power, which is great because it wouldn't certainly fit into this small space. The system that I'm using is from Donkey Car, and Donkey Car is a uh, small group of developers that have been developing this self-driving software for RC cars specifically. Um, they build their own uh, off a very rudimentary platform that basically is just throttle forward reverse and uh, steering left and right. Uh, this is going to be a bit more challenging because there are other systems that I want to try to integrate into it. But the basics of Donkey Car uh, do allow for a neural net learning program that can look at a series of images that the vehicle has taken in training mode and determine where the vehicle needs to be in that space in order to drive on a track. And yes, you are reliant on making a track, but the track can be any shape and any design that you please. Provided you've done enough training with the vehicle, it will be able to handle any track you throw at it. And that's the beauty of this system, is that it's all very compact, very small, and fits on this chassis. The computer system that I'm using is called Raspberry Pi. And it is a very small computing system that runs off of one board that has a ton of outputs, ton of inputs, and a ton of option parts that you can add later on to add more functionality to your own Raspberry Pi. Like I said, I'm running Donkey Car software, and that Donkey Car software is written in the Python environment. I am not a programmer, and I do not claim to be one. I definitely struggled through installing all of this software onto the Raspberry Pi, but it is on there and it is working. There are a lot of great FAQs and a lot of great instruction manuals posted online in the Donkey Car repository. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in checking this out. It's probably easier if you're going to try this to do it the way that Donkey Car asks you to, and I'll make sure to put a link to everything you need to put one together. 
And of course, if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. And with this project, there will definitely be updates. We are only scratching the surface here today. There is a lot more to learn and a lot more stuff that's gonna happen that I think is really gonna make this a very cool project for 2020. The Raspberry Pi itself has a few components that I've already added to it to make it a little more functional on its own. Because it's a Raspberry Pi 3, it already has wide Wi-Fi on board uh, so it can communicate directly to uh, my laptop through the router in the house. I also have an I2C board which is how you interface the ESC and servos to the Raspberry Pi so they can communicate with each other. And there is a 5 volt battery on board that powers just the Raspberry Pi. It's essentially just a uh, you know external charging battery that you can use for your iPhone. Uh, but because the Raspberry Pi is a 5 volt system, it works perfectly to power this and actually lasts a very long time. Along with the I2C connector and the Raspberry Pi and the power source, it also includes a camera. And I've done a pretty decent job, I think, of stealthily mounting that camera right up front in the grill. And the reason you need a camera on the front of the truck is in training mode and of course in driving mode it uses that camera to analyze the track as it's driving down it. When you're in training mode that camera is taking pictures every second and uh, what it's doing is compiling a list of all of those photos so it can actually use that data later on to analyze where the truck is in relation to the edges of the track. When it's in driving mode, it's using that camera to analyze where it is in real time on the track and use all of the data from all of its training to maintain its position. It's a pretty complex system, but the way that it's set up here I, is, is exactly how Donkey Car recommends it. So uh, I think we're in pretty good shape hardware and interface wise. There are a lot of steps to getting this set up and most of it involves the command line in a terminal uh, and it's really complicated stuff and not something that I am even really comfortable trying to explain to you. One of the steps along the way is calibration and you're basically explaining to the computer system how this truck functions. You need to make sure you set your endpoints with the servo so it's not trying to oversteer in either direction. It's only steering to the maximum steering that that servo will provide. And I'm trying to minimize the throttle input to about 50% so it can't take off and you know, scare the dog or run over a cat or any of those things because uh, because it's autonomous, it'll get away from you for sure. Once you've got a significant number of photos in that database, you offload all of that data onto your host computer at home, uh, your PC, your Mac, whatever, uh, and compile all that data and teach it over a neural network to understand how to drive. Once you've done that, you put all of that data back onto the Raspberry Pi and start driving autonomously. It sounds so simple, but it's not anywhere close to that simple. I have been fiddling with this software for weeks. <laughs> so it's not easy. That's part of the joy of this for me is that it's not easy. It's hard and challenging and I like that. So for us, the next steps now that we've got everything mounted and installed and we've started doing some simulating, it is time to try to take it outside and build a track. Uh, unfortunately, I do need a bit more space than my home offers. I don't have enough room in the basement to set up my own track. So a lot of the actual training is going to have to wait until the weather gets a lot better. Fortunately, I can do some simulated testing and training. Uh, there is an excellent donkey simulator available, uh, and this will run on Mac, PC, Linux, whatever you've got. Uh, these programs are fantastic, and it does offer a whole option for virtual training inside the computer. So you can go through all of the driving on a track, and the system will record all of that data. Since it's already on your computer, your computer can do all the compiling, looking at all those pictures to create its own autonomous driving system. Now autonomy and RC cars don't really go together and it doesn't make a ton of sense if I'm honest. I already have the ability to control it myself, go where I want it to. Why would I want to take away any of that control and allow uh, say a computer to do it for you? Uh, doesn't that kind of reduce the amount of fun? And I guess in a way it sort of does, but in the other sort of way it makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more exciting because I'm going to leave all the control up to the actual vehicle and the computer itself 
So it's gonna kind of decide where it wants to go based on parameters that I've set in the computer. I don't know, it's, for me, it's more of creating the challenge and seeing if I can actually make it work. Uh, making a car drive by itself isn't technically difficult. It's making sure that it drives on its own safely and, uh, you know, can avoid obstacles and can, uh, you know, adapt to the terrain if the terrain is going to change. And these are all things that I want to explore in this challenge. Uh, and I should stop calling it a challenge because it's not really a challenge. I'm not challenging anybody other than myself. Uh, but that's where I think uh, it sort of lives. It is a challenging topic and it is a challenging uh truck to build but uh one that i'm certainly looking forward to i think that this could be a really cool uh kind of add-on to the competition factor that happens in scale trucks i think it would be really cool to have a course set up that other people are competing with their own autonomous vehicles i think that could be a real thing do you agree or disagree post a comment down below because i honestly think that this has got traction no pun intended so there you go, that's sort of the intro to uh, autonomous self-driving RC vehicles. And uh, it's going to be a long road and a very challenging one, I'd say. So I hope you will stick around and follow along. If you've got any questions or if you've got any comments or if you've got anything at all to say about this, don't forget to post some comments down below. I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. I guess the ultimate question is, do you think it's going to work? I hope so. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.